So Nvidia have launched their new GTX 1660 Super. And well, I've got another one here too. So I've got two GTX 1660 Supers from Gigabyte and they're both called the OCs. And this one, however, has the gaming logo on it, even though they look pretty much the same. And I will preface this video by saying, rest in peace, brother Kevin, you will be missed. And if I know it's one thing, he's up there telling me, Brian, you've got to keep up that yes energy. So this video is dedicated to you, brother. Rest in peace. And with that aside, let's now get into the benchmarks and then we'll talk about the differences between these two cards and how this card is actually stacking up to be a mid-range king. So the first benchmark we're gonna pull up for you guys is Far Cry New Dawn where the Super pretty much is gaining on that TI, and that TI is coming in at 279 USD, whether as opposed to this one, the Super is coming in at 229 USD. And in this price bracket, that $50 does make a considerable difference, especially in percentage terms. And when we look at the percentage differences, there's really not a whole lot there. And moving on to Strange Brigade, we can pretty much see a similar trend here where it's coming well ahead of a 1660, only costing $10 more, and then coming close to that of the 1660 Ti. But I did throw in another benchmark for you guys, and that is the overclocked numbers, where we can see that this is now pulling ahead of the 1070 easily, and also the 1660 Ti easily. And when overclocking both these cards, they pretty much sat in the same area in terms of where they overclocked, and even out of the box, they gave pretty similar performance. So if you go out and buy any 1660 Super, it's pretty much gonna give you similar performance. And we'll talk about that a little bit later after we move through the rest of these benchmarks where we had Shadow of the Tomb Raider, again, kicking it hard for that Super. But we tested this at 1080p high settings and it was pulling some really impressive numbers especially for the money. And then the last benchmark we're going to pull up for you guys is F1 2019 Ultra settings. And we can see here yet again, pulling well ahead of that 1660 and coming close again to the TI variant. So those benchmarks show that the 1660 Super is bringing in that better performance just like the 2060 Super and 2070 Super did, as opposed to the 2080 Super. I wasn't too keen on that. I thought you only got a little bit more for pretty much the same price at that expensive price bracket. This is pretty much shaving off $50 off a 1660 Ti at a price bracket where it really matters. And the interesting thing with this card is all Nvidia has done is pretty much replace the GDDR5 with GDDR6. And what this has effectively done is increase the memory throughput pretty much 75%. So if there was a memory bottleneck on the original 1660, that's now been alleviated where you're gaining a lot of extra performance just by that memory tweak alone. And now the good thing about that power consumption is not only is it gonna save you money on your power bill when you're gaming for long periods of time, but it also allows cooler designs like this, which when I first weighed it up, I thought, well, 569 grams is a little bit anemic. Though when we looked at the temperatures and the fan speeds, we were only getting up to 63% fan speeds and the temperatures were in the low 60s and the noise was very well controlled. And that's the funny thing is the gaming OC model is giving out similar performance, yet it was a slight bit noisier and the cooler weighed in at 667 grams. So the three triple 80 mil fans on the gaming OC are essentially not doing as good as a job as the two 90 mil fans on the cheaper non-gaming edition. Another thing too for the measurements, we got both of these being dual slot cards and they have three display outs each on them and an HDMI 2.0 out. And this one is 282 mil long. And this one here, the smaller one being 225 mil long. And another thing about these cards is they both require a single eight pin power connector and they both have plastic back plates with the ends being arced off at a 45 degree angle. Bojangle. So now to quickly sum things up for you guys, this is one of those cards that's coming in at a price segment that is very competitive and then it's bringing even more competition 
to that segment. So I was very impressed with this card, despite what, I don't know, maybe other reviewers think it's lackluster or if it's mediocre, I'm actually liking where this card is at 219 MSRP. And the models I've got here, one is looking like it will come in at MSRP, the other will look like, usually with the gaming OCs, they'll come in 10 or $20 higher and they give you a bigger cooler, which in this case wasn't necessarily that good since the power consumption on these cards is so low that you can get away with the standard 290 mil fan edition. And another good thing about both these cards is on their price point is they include fan stop. So when you're idle on the desktop, the fans will stop spinning. So great job on both these models in terms of keeping the noise down and the temperatures down and giving out good FPS and also good overclockability. Though another thing I will state before I get on out of here is there is the 1650 Super coming as well and that will have the uh, new Turing encoder, which the original 1650 didn't, and that's coming out uh, later next month. So stay tuned for that. This one also features that new encoder. And the good thing about this new encoder is not only does it give you really good quality when you're recording with shadow play, but another thing is too, I've noticed it doesn't really drop the FPS that much at all. So you don't have to be afraid to use this thing for streaming and worrying about big FPS drops. It really is a good thing for people who wanna get into streaming, and especially at this price point on a budget, you're gonna have a good card that gives out great FPS and still can do streaming and things like that. And that's about it for today's review. If you guys enjoyed this one, then be sure to hit that like button. Also let us know in the comment section below, which of these two cards do you like better? I'm personally leaning towards the smaller one. I think it does a better job and it costs a little bit less, but I'll let you guys be the judge. And also rest in peace, Kevin from Tech Showdown, man. I said it once in the intro and I'll say it again in this outro. I loved you, brother. You're a good friend and you're also a good person to the community. And I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.